And here to greet us, bet you're our tour guide, aren't you? How are you? I'm Huell Hauser. I'm Ranger Bob Frey. Nice to meet you, sir. Let's just start right off the bat. Where are we? What's back behind the museum? This is a demonstration Indian village. The real village was some distance over this direction, but uh, houses and uh, ritual structures have been built back here. So this is a little path where people can take a self-guiding trail mm -hmm. and they can see somewhat how the Indians lived in Yosemite Valley here. Now let's talk just a minute about the Indians in Yosemite Valley. Which Indians traditionally lived here? Were there a lot of Indians here in the valley at one time? This was a village of perhaps two to three hundred people. They called themselves Awanichis. The name of their valley is Awani. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they were uh, not, not a tribe, but they spoke the Miwok language. And so the word, there were never more than 200? Two or 300, that's about it. Gosh, I would have thought they would have been all over this valley. But living, living the style that they did, hunting and gathering and trading with others, that's about as much as uh, this, this valley that's about eight miles long and about a mile wide could support. Really? Yes. All right, now what have we got here? Um, where did these structures come from? These, these are bark structures. Some people think they look like teepees. They're called uh, umachas. Can we walk um over here? Now this is made of bark. This is made of cedar bark. When the cedar trees die, or if they get burned and fall down, the bark comes loose in a couple of years, so mm -hmm. they're simply stacked up with some poles inside, some support poles. They didn't build fires inside, but outside where the fires and inside where, where they slept or where they stored material in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Would they have used the same ones season after season, yeah. or would they have continually you, built you, new ones? You have to reconstruct them about every three years. Mm -hmm. And you've got uh, two more over here. Yes, this is... And then some, and some more over in this other direction as well. Would they have been so, clustered like that? In this, in a, this uh, village might represent a winter situation where many of the extended families would come back and, and stay here for the winter. Ah. So there might be more structures, but there could be others in the summertime where they took up residence in other parts of the valley. Boy, there's one right here. It really yes. just blends in with the terrain, doesn't yeah, it? It's quite natural with all the, the leaves and all on side, coming down on top. And it looks it like it winter. might have been warm in the wintertime. It is quite warm. But you know, this is a rather mild environment. This elevation here at 4,000 feet is about as high as human beings could live year round. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have this a lot site, of kids coming through here, don't you? Oh, a lot of school groups. Lots of school groups, even in the summertime. Now look at this. Now this is the roundhouse. This is the ceremonial roundhouse, where, uh, which is still working today. It's a dedicated roundhouse, and there are four big oak posts that hold up this whole structure. And this has to be reconstructed too, about probably every dozen years or so. Now, is this little thing over here connected with the roundhouse? This is a, a sweat lodge, and it's built on the same plan that this one is, with four little posts inside. And would it have had and grass on it like that on yes. the top? In fact, this one would also have uh, soil and sod on the top of it. But when we put dirt on this several years ago, the kids ran up and down the roof and it was <laughs> too unsafe. When we took the dirt off, then they left it alone. All right, now the sweat house is basically that just exactly what it implies, right? Yes, but and sweating for these people was really... Um, almost a spiritual process because they not only cleanse the body, the outer body but you're working on yourself and it was a serious matter and they wouldn't let you in there's a sweat master there and he wouldn't let you in unless you were in good standing really uh, and what does good standing mean well it meant that you were serious mm -hmm. that you weren't frivolous and you you had had been honest with your your relatives mm -hmm. everybody here in the valley is a relative i got gotcha. you yeah. Now, how do you get in this roundhouse? Is well, this there, the entrance? There are two entrances. This is the, the west entrance here where the sun comes up. And this is where all the people enter. But there is a back entrance which is used by the dancers and by a few other people. So this was set up to, to deal with the way the sun rose and sat every day. Yes. A lot of, a lot of structures throughout the country 
other other types of like hogans and others they all met the rising sun in the, in the morning now there's a, a sign here that says we can't go in right now. Is this used still yes, on special occasions? It's still used and on certain occasions when we do invite, I have permission from the local council to take people in if they're serious. They can't mm -hmm. take pictures. Mm -hmm. and they so have, we couldn't take any pictures in no, there because it is a religious place. Well, it, yes, but in the old days it was also used in the winter time when it was cold mm -hmm. and people could sit around the fire and work. Well, and why wouldn't we be able to take pictures? Well, it's just considered disrespectful I got because, because it is used for um, for dancing. Mm -hmm. And the dancing that's done here is d done throughout the night and it's considered uh, power dancing. Whereas more uh, social dancing would be done outside here with women. See, the dancing is done with four men around the fire with a, uh, a drummer over to the side and a chanter or somebody who's singing. And that's all men. The Have women, you ever seen this? Oh, yes, yes. I've been invited in. Great privilege. Wow. Yes. I've seen over 200 people just sitting all the way back next to the wall. I've seen healings going on in here, 2 wow. o'clock in the morning. Wow. <laughs> now, this looks like a I mean this looks fairly new here this reflects the uh, turn of the century when Indian people came back to the valley to work for the hotel people and uh, they used old lumber and cast off pieces that they could find sometimes ten they call it a chief's house we uh, we use it for they use it for dressing now and preparing for some of their dancing. You know, there's it has all these sides to it. The way it's constructed, it's got like uh, it's like eight a, sides, twelve sides to it. Sort of like a roundhouse in itself. Yeah. In fact, there are roundhouses like this one that are constructed like this, only much larger. Now this is this whole area looks like an area that would have been perfect for the Indians to live in. Um, this this setting here. Yes, it's a nice setting. However, in in the main part of the oak grove, which is about a quarter of a mile over here, it was much more natural. And this is the sunny side of the valley. You see, this mm -hmm. is this when the sun in the winter time, when the sun is uh, below the cliff over here, it's very cold on that side of the valley. So they would have lived over on this side of the valley. Yes. These rocks. Now there's a little plaque here. This plaque is, uh, commemorates the first interpretation that was done in the Park Service, started in 1920. And uh, it just uh, indicates uh, a phase of, of the understanding that education is an important part of preserving the parks as well as the, the scenery itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's talk about the numbers again. They, the, the Native Americans were here. Then were they, then they were, driven out? Did they, were, they leave on their own? They were, they were driven out in 1851 and uh, really didn't reassemble themselves to live the traditional lifestyle after that. Mm -hmm. But they, as soon as the hotels began to be established starting in 1858 and 59, they dribbled back and they had their own village on, in their own sites, which really didn't correspond to the traditional ones. Mm -hmm. And they never really lived traditionally after that either. They caught fish, they hunted for the hotels, they did other chores, and the women were able to sell baskets to people that were here as visitors. Are there any Native Americans living? There are, there are at least six or seven or eight hundred living in this county and they work in here in the valley there are two or three families work for the park service some of them work for the company we call it the the concessioner mm -hmm. and they can trace their lineage back it's amazing when i talk to them they're much better than i am in my with my family but uh, everybody knows everybody and it, it's all interconnected and, and do they still come and use this area for yes, ceremonies i've and seen marriages here and as I said, uh, healings and other things. Every year we have a Trans Sierra walk um, over the old Mono Trail. It was mm -hmm. just finished last week. And they have big potlucks here. And so they get together. And uh, not only the, the Miwok peoples on this side, since there's been a combination of Paiute on, on the other side of the mountains, plus these, they've mixed up. We have uh, other groups as well. I'm and then, just looking over your shoulder over here. There's another. These structures are kind of hidden in among the trees, some of them. Yes, we try to. Well, this nice open area here is, is also used for dancing if it's, uh, you know, women and children and, mm -hmm. and others. But, and for uh, 
Now yeah, this says that. Miwok Cabin. Well, this is and there's an actual picture of it. That, that, is that a real picture? That's a real picture of one that was here, and this is a reconstruction of that. Here are the old riven shakes that are here, sugar pine shakes, and old cast off lumber. Here's a, a cauldron, mm -hmm. and it was commandeered to, to use. Anything that was cast off from, from other, the other culture that was here, they took advantage of. So this is amazing right here because it's, you really, you're right, it, it traces the evolution of the living yes. condition. A lot of people expect, when visitors come here, expect the Indians to act like movies, the movie Indians. And really, most of the people that are here remember the uh, 100, 150 years ago. They're not about to reconstruct uh, the 200 or 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. After all, they were hunters and gatherers and traders. And that kind of lifestyle wouldn't be appropriate, especially in the national park. Mm -hmm. They can't hunt the fish. They can't poison the fish, <laughs> you know. And they can't. Uh, they can't. What do you mean use, poison the fish? Well, they use poison to get their fish. One of the, one of the ways of getting fish was to rub poison in the water from a soap root. We have it growing all around here. Mm -hmm. And uh, shooting deer with bows and arrows, trapping squirrels, trapping birds, and other things. It's just is not done in the park. Mm -hmm. So, the Indian life here is is really not. Uh, the way some people expect it to be in the southwest or other places like that. Mm -hmm. This is much older than the southwest area. Boy, I'm Pounded. just looking up at, at what we're looking up at up here. This is spectacular. Can you imagine being a, a native person growing up here as children and having names for all these peaks and all these cliffs and they all have special significance, many of them with very personal significance and with stories behind them like Lost Arrow you know, that was shot by a, a man and then he slipped as he shot it and the arrow didn't land down here and the gods turned it into a, a, a pinnacle, a stone pinnacle. So all of these old Indian stories are still very much alive. Yes. They've been preserved. Yeah. El Capitan, the biggest of all the rocks, was named after an insignificant creature, Totucanula, a, a measuring worm because that was the only animal that could climb the rocks. And everybody laughed at it, but it could inch its way up, and then they didn't laugh at it anymore. It's a good story to tell children, you know. Don't worry if you're small. You can do great things. Well, look who we